Hey Finn, I have I have a special birthday plan for uh you know. Yeah, I have a birthday stream for you. <laughs> yeah. So, today, yeah, this is for you, cause we're friends. I did this like for one other friend, cause I just had the idea. You know. But yeah, we here, we vibe. Yeah. So today I figured since it's your birthday, I had to, I had to finally read your story. <laughs> this is, this is what I had planned. I was, I was gonna read your story. Mm -hmm. You know, finally, yeah. I guess we should get this, um, like the one I wrote. Yes, the one you wrote about Cap's community and stuff. With us in it. All the good stuff. Let me, let me just put this in a separate tab. And yeah. Mm. Mm, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be fun. You're gonna see my reaction today. Mm -hmm. You know, I kept forgetting to ask. I kept forgetting to ask when you were ready to for me to finally read it. You know, I no, I haven't read it yet because I was gonna do it for a stream, right? But I just kept forgetting to ask you when you were free. So I was just like, you know what? <laughs> it's your birthday. You know, I'm sure. Oh no. No, I found it in the cap server. It's all right. We good, we vibing. Do, do. I read some of it before. I just haven't read all of it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I think I got through like a couple of pages, but I never actually um got through it all, so. I, I got I got through like a couple pages and then I was like, you know, I'm gonna do this first stream because it's very long and you know I feel like that would you know keep me you know <laughs> reading things because I have a very I'm very bad about reading things. You know? Oh, like when any anything's like a lot of pages, I'm just like nah. <laughs> I hope I did you guys justice, yeah. You better. <laughs> I'll I'll be I'll be rating with my cheese wow <laughs> my cheese wow and I will be judging this very harshly. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, have fun. I'm working on coterie. Co <laughs> Sorry, coterie <laughs> coding. Not me reading private jobs. Energy. North has energy, I see. Yes. Well, you're the birthday person, so yeah, let's go. We've got the thingy up. Alright. Dedicated to you! Yes, you! The one reading this. You're likely my friend, which means I've, I, I feel very fondly of you. Yeah, it's your- it's your- it's your thing. 
the one read you're likely my friend which means i oh i already read that thank you for existing and giving me secondhand motivation <laughs> motiv <laughs> motivation to make things uh trigger warning angst depiction uh descriptions of end of the world events asteroid impact and consequent caster fear group loss anxiety panic attacks unspecified but implied familiar death one claustrophobic situation small depiction of a mental breakdown that may or may not have been included in the final cut extremely brief mention of vomit trust me i hate it more than you do depictions of blood uh, descriptions of blood and small wounds general angst probably themes of abandonment if you squint real hard <laughs> you mean if i <laughs> you mean if i <laughs> yeah yeah i love i love i love the panic attack what is this Oh yes, Armin is a princess! Yes, let's go. Okay, anyways. And the panic attacks I wrote about are based on the ones I had. They usually last longer than half an hour. I mentioned... Uh, also, I left stuff out for time's sake, so I didn't have to describe everything. And everyone's are different. If you're trying to help someone who's suffering from one, the best way to, to help is to ask what they need instead of assuming. It is so much talking. I try to make this fluffy and light as I could because I don't really know how well everyone handles apocalypse settings, but I wanted to make sure everyone could read it. So it becomes kind of funny in some parts. It's also because I was describing up things. My apocalypse stories are usually more dark. Apocalypse? Sorry, there's more? <laughs> Darker gory. Also, I've never written this many characters before, so it makes it a little awkward sounding too. Gosh, I hope you guys pick up on cost text clues and follow who's being spoken about otherwise you're going to be very confused <laughs> don't mind me just pushing my arm in as a distant princess ultimatum literally literally the funny thing is Sai, i haven't read this but my story does that too the story i'm writing for my community where you're like an alien or whatever and i haven't been working on at all because i'm so unmotivated but that's okay that's good. <laughs> she is, so is. I made her a rat in mine. Oh, si sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I mean Finn. I meant Finn. I haven't talked with you a lot. I'm very sorry. <laughs> yes, Finn. That's what I meant. I <laughs> did, 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 did. I'm not actually super happy with how this turned out. Mostly the fact that I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to end this. Hope this isn't... It is called... You are called Sai in this story. So, I could change it if you want, but... I hope the ending isn't too abrupt. Also, here's a playlist. Wait, why is there a playlist? Why did you put a... Why is there a playlist? <laughs> why is there? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Cause it's based on the story. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I see. I see. I see. I guess I'll favorite that for vibes, of course. All right. I feel like I should have that on, but I can't because it's all copyrighted. <laughs> Dorn it, Finn! <laughs> How dare ye! Hmm, Cap. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm not mad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Captain sat in his crow nest, uh, surveying their small ship. It was a sunny day, and a pleasant breeze ruffled his hair. His ragtag crew of unlikely friends was strewn out across the deck. They were all busy with their respective tasks, creating a sort of organized chaos that he had gr My mouse, having a mood, grown to be- All right, that's okay. You have a- you- your- your birthday, it's fine. None of them really knew each other yet, but they would come to trust each other with their lives. Although this bond would never really be tested, they were safe and had the whole future ahead of them to look forward to. But in the meantime, they were content to relax and keep busy with the pirate life. Captain was bittersweet, though. He couldn't help but think of all they had lost to get to this point. 
They had all sacrificed so much in such a short time, and he knew the adjustment peri period wasn't going to go as smoothly as he hoped it would. A few months earlier, 911, what's your emergency? The phones had all lit up at once, in a way that none of the operators had ever seen before. Everyone in town seemed to be calling, reporting lights in the sky. And although the operators directed them elsewhere, the calls kept coming. After a while, it became evident that the light in the sky was an asteroid on a collision course. People got more afraid as the days passed and the asteroid came closer. Some evacuated, some chose to hunker down and wait it out. And the surrounding towns, seven, <laughs> hey, seven strangers all had the same idea. Get out at all costs. The apocalypse hit hard and fast. Years later, people would estimate the asteroid to have been about half the size of a football field. The impact and resulting earthquake was fell for was felt for miles. Every building within the radius was flattened, and anyone who hadn't already got out never did. The sky was almost immediately blocked out by ash and debris. This would go on to blot out the sun for almost half the world, and it would be weeks before it all settled and the sky was blue again. The tsunami that resulted from the impact and the consequent air earthquakes was felt across the sea, although it was only as small waves on the beach. Early in the morning of the first day after the sightings began, a young man finished packing his bag and he set out down the road. He wasn't sure where he was going, he just knew he needed to be away. He seemed to remember hearing something on the radio about how it was probably safer across the water, so he angled himself towards the coast. He had already said his goodbyes to his family. They were too proud and too stubborn to leave, but he couldn't ignore the constant clamor in his torso, the panic urging him to run while he still could. He was old enough he could have fended for himself, but before now, he had no need to. He would be fine. He had on his pair of joggers, a t-shirt, a windbreaker jacket, and his best running shoe. I don't know- I don't know what some of these outfit things are. I don't know what a windbreaker jacket is. But Cap probably does. <laughs> he had wrapped his knuckles in compression bandages because it made him feel less like he was going to shake apart at the seams. The thing with panic was- Oh wow, I, I can't- No, where'd it go? Oh. The thing with panic was, if you gave into it, there was no going back. And once the wings in his chest and noise in his head realized he was leaving, they got louder, more insistent, spurring on him on faster. Pretty soon, a brisk walk wasn't enough, and he kicked up into a run. Normally, he would have relished the slap of his shoes against the pavement. But Emmett was too overwhelmed to notice. Mm -hmm. Might be me speaking like a Canadian. Oh, I see. At the same time this was happening, a woman could be seen doing something very similar. Hey, it's Armin! Let's go! <laughs> she had packed a couple of changes of clothes in one pocket of her head and most of her prized art supplies in the other. She had put on her favorite green hoodie and a pair of leggings. See, this and prized art supplies. That was that was Armin for me. <laughs> Pulled up her air so it wouldn't get in the way and determinedly ventured out the door. Truth be told, she had been looking for an opportunity to make her own worry in the world. But she had never anticipated it would be like this. She was afraid, but you wouldn't have known it. She walked with such a purpose. It might have looked like she was heading to the store for some thread uh for a project she was working on if it wasn't for the vacant glassy look mouse please move in her eyes she could feel the allure that was the empty promise of safety coming for water and was headed that way hoping to buy passage out on a boat she cinched her bag straps up tighter padding at her pockets to assure herself that everything she packed was still there and picked up a pace a little as she walked further from the center of the town, she began to see more and more people, who all seemed to have different ideas about how to evacuate. Taking a steadying breath, Armin ducked her head and into the crowd, headed for the dockyard. The morning came and went as another young person attempted to power through the panic. She could feel... She could feel working its way through her mind. She made sure to pack some extra food in her bag, considering she definitely wouldn't be able to 
eat any before she left. She moved slowly because she was very dizzy, and if she didn't sit down every few minutes, she knew she would certainly pass out. The shakes were the worst. They made it almost impossible to do anything, and eventually she gave up and sat down on the floor, planning to wait it out. And wait she did. It was probably half an hour before everything subsided enough that she could continue. Half the people in the story, I feel like, aren't even active in the Discord anymore. I mean, y you know, it's... Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm... I've... You know, I'm sometimes there. It's sad, but it's a good story. It's a good story. I, I, uh, I also felt that because a lot of my old friend group, uh, you know, I'm not even friends with anymore, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do do. Uh, do 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 do. Yeah, so I felt that. But it's alright. It's a good story. Good story. I'm still here. And I'm still going to enjoy this. Uh, I don't think it does. She wrapped bandages snugly around her midsection because the pressure was calming, so she said. She put some traveling clothes on, tied her hair up, hoisted her bag onto her shoulders, and headed out the door. The whole walk was a struggle. She was drained still from the episode later, and she wasn't breathing the best. There was a war going on in her brain. She couldn't decide if it was scary to leave or stay, and neither option was particularly appealing. Eventually, she managed to take make her way to the boatyard. There were more people than she anticipated, and her anxiety immediately kicked back into beer. She stood up on her tippy toes to look over the crowd to see if she recognized anyone. She didn't, but she hadn't expected to. Finn wrapped her arms around herself and slipped through the gate. Early afternoon, and still more bags were being packed. He was too young for this, but he and his headmates would figure it out. <laughs> Oh boy, Finn, I wonder who this is. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> they always did. He had put on their most comfortable sweater and pants, and they had had an argument about how many stuffed animals they could bring. By the way, we never do this, but I think it's... I, I just like the bit... I just... We've never done that, but I do think it is, I do think it is, I, th I think it's, I think it's, I think it's funny. <laughs> Eventually they narrowed it down to one, their fox friend. See, I, I like the incorporation of my stuffed animals, but uh, realistically we would never do this because, because for us, these things are a soothing thing. So, you know, if an altar wants to bring it then we're bringing it because we'd rather them bring it than not have like a breakdown you know so that's just yeah mm -hmm. they had been reminded to pack some granola bars and something to drink yeah 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 the granola bars let's go along with other essentials and then set out the door the fear was tugging at them urging their legs along faster but there wasn't much they could do besides simply moving a bit quicker. They readjusted his bracelets a bit as something to do while he walked. Yeah. <laughs> much room in a bag. I see. No, but I just carry them. I just carry them. Oh, man. <laughs> That's what I do, Sai. <laughs> I mean, Finn. Mmm. Mmm. Um. Uh. Yeah. E. I see. I understand. Listen, I could find a way. These are actually very flexible. So. And why would I bring a small bag? If I'm not bringing my biggest bag, am I really me? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. <laughs> that is true. I, I, I naturally bring very big bags to like anything because I just, I, I always feel like I need to bring the whole world with me <laughs> when I'm going so somewhere. Uh, 
someone had mentioned that they might be safe on the water. Maybe he could get somewhere else before the asteroid hit. And they reasoned that when the earthquakes reach the water, they may stand a chance on the boat. That they may stay on top of the waves. They reached the dockyard mid-afternoon and found it full of people who had obviously had a similar idea. Deciding to wait it out and hope the crowd might thin a little by evening, they found a small alley to hunker down in. Space invaders pulled his knees up to their chest and tightened his arms around their fox friend, prepared to write. Hey, you changed it. Mm -hmm. By midday, Armin was tired and found herself uh, looking for a place to sit for a while. She planned on catching her breath and maybe having something to eat before ducking back into the chaos of the streets. Changing her direction, she headed towards an alley that looked to be facing the dockyard. She'd been able to sit in the shade there while still watching the crowds to ensure she made it on the boat out by that night. She walked up to an alley and turned on her heel, skirting the corner and heading into the dimness. She stopped short. There, wrapped up in the corner, sat a person. She couldn't make up much about them, just that they were wearing a red sweater, curled in on themselves, and holding on to something. Their head was down and she couldn't see their face, but she got the impression that they were pretty stressed. Hello, she ventured quietly, and the figure jolted. Their head snapped up and met her eyes. Theirs were, uh, haunted and glassy, but a shadow crossed their features and it quickly evolved to a, stinks, a distinctly defensive look. Armin smiled gently as she could and said, I'm waiting to get a boat out of here, so I'm going to sit on the other side of the alley while I wait for the crowds to thin. Is that okay? When they modded, she lowered herself to the ground. She fully expected to sit in silence, but she opened up her sketchbook to pass the time. Their expressions shifted again, and they scooted closer. Armin ended up talking about art while they looked in awe. The Vaders didn't talk much, but the two seemed to form a, ten a, a, a tenacious, temporary alliance. Ten, 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 ten to us. To what? Temporary alliance. <laughs> One that would go further than either of them expected it to. <laughs> Another young man, just like all the others, zipped his bag clothes and said farewell to his house. It wasn't the best, and he never expected it to be permanent. But he was still sad to be leaving. I- I would genuinely- If Armin pulled out the sketchbook, you know, you know. You know, I'm- I'm loving it. <laughs> so I love that. I love that. Thank you- thank you for painting that image in my mind. Um... Zipped his bag clothes. Uh... Ah, 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 ah. It wasn't the best, and he never expected it to be more permanent. But he was still sad to be leaving. He secured all his things in his pockets and picked up, uh, kicked up a comfortable jog. He was headed to the, toward the, mer <laughs> the marina, intending to charm his way out onto a boat and out of the city. He had some money to fall back on, but he was pretty confident. As he neared the coast, he could see the dockyard was busy. He was able to look over the heads of most of the people out towards the water. He could smell it. The salty brine in the air made him a little dizzy with ant anticipation. <laughs> ah! ah! <laughs> and anticipation. Locked in rear about escape. He didn't see the little redhead. <laughs> Until it was too late. They were both distressed. <laughs> distressed! <laughs> Distracted, moving fast, and they quite quack. <laughs> Collided! Quite <laughs> hard. He heard the air rush <laughs> out of her lungs, and she looked at up at him, and the glassy, vacant look in her eyes and had him concerned. She was very pale and further folded in on herself when he put uh, his hands on her shoulders to steady her. She was small, but she didn't look much younger than him, and her expression told him <laughs> that she had very little idea of what she was doing. Everyone was desperate and scared due to their current situation, but there was something different about this person, and he felt like he should make it up to her for running her over. The least he could do was ensure she made it onto the boat and got out. Despite how afraid of him she looked, she stuck pretty close. He guessed she had felt a little lost and needed an ally. Elias located a boat that seemed to be pretty empty and angled a small 
party hat that way in hopes of a ride. You know, I've actually really not gotten to know Elias, uh, El alias, uh, <laughs> Elias. <laughs> I think it's alias. I haven't, I haven't really got to know him. I only talked with him like the other day in Jackbox <laughs> for the first time in BC and that was interesting. I don't think he's bad at all. I just don't really know who he is. Mm -hmm. And I haven't. Why is my... As the afternoon stretched on, Armin became increasingly nervous. She began to take pace, walking back and forth between invaders and the opening of the alleyway. Habit, 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 ch jolly, checking to see how full the boat yard was at the moment. When the crowd started to die down, she urged the other to their feet and back into the street. They wandered into seemingly aimless fashion, but Armin had an idea of where she was going. She was keeping an eye on boats, looking for empty ones. She hopped up onto her tiptoes to peer over the crowd, and she sp spotted a couple people who were a little taller than the rest. She looked at her traveling partner, who wasn't exceptionally tall. She wasn't either, and decided that may be beneficial to have someone on their side who could see amongst the people better. One of the men had tousled brown hair and seemed to be leading someone. Based on how often he looked down to his side, the other was wearing a baseball cap and staring pensive pensively out at the sea. She decided that the first person was already leading someone and was perfectly plenty capable of taking a few more. The watery sunlight of the afternoon was filtering into the window of another young man's apartment. He stretched gro groggily and the painful pull of his fresh tattoo abruptly reminded him what was going on. He checked the time and resisted the urge to bolt out of bed. He instead strode. He instead took his time getting his things together. Having completed his morning routine, he strode out to the door, his bag full of everything he may need for a foreseeable future. He had donned a jacket and carried a travel cup full of iced coffee, trying to convince himself that he was simply going for a walk. Um, he couldn't let himself acknowledge otherwise. Having lived by the water for most of his life, his feet unconsciously took him to the beach. He had zoned out and the sudden difference of sand under his shoe Sand under his shoes snapped him back to reality. He thought maybe he could find a small boat that he could use to get off the mainland. He listened to the steady murmur of the waves for a minute, letting it calm him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then he began to walk once more. The closer he got to the dockyard, the more evident it became that to many other people had the same other idea. And the voices grew louder. Tsuki pulled his bandana tighter around his forehead and pushed open to the gate. I've also talked with this person like once. Me and Armin had a funny moment. Uh, and that's what I remember. I don't know, he was talking about like sports or something like he was a really cool sports pe person <laughs> i don't know it's funny he made a silly intro hmm. um a young woman finished plating uh her hair shrugged on her jacket then her bag and set her jaw heading out to the door she had told herself she wouldn't be afraid wouldn't turn back but as try as she might she couldn't just leave forever and not look at her house one last time as she turned around she was haloed in the light from the sun behind her had someone been staring at standing in the window they would have seen just how beautifully tragic she looked wow son well well then this is <laughs> little ah little wisps of hair were blowing around her face where they had fallen out of her braid and she was lit from behind by the golden light of the sinking sun. Had someone been closer though, they would have seen how she was trembling. Would have seen how the light rink winked off a the si Ugh, I'm s having such a struggle. The single tear that, sl that slipped down her cheek as she turned around and started walking again. 
She wasn't sure where she had intended to go, but wasn't entirely surprised to find her feet had guided her to the marina. She had spent so much time there, on boats with her dad, playing in the sand nearby with her baby sister. She hadn't been back in years and hadn't realized how much she missed it. She was going through- she was going to get through this. She always did. The steely determination flowing through her veins proved so. Kinsey had been through s some stuff, but this certainly topped everything else she had seen. Just get a uh, jacket. <laughs> Jack, get, wash. Take the jacket. Mm -mm. Well, that almost went in my trash. Uh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, one second. Let me just. <laughs> this is so. Let me just. Let me just. I'm so. I'm like sweating. And it's making me uncomfy. Do I have some shorts? And there we go, shorts. <laughs> Those pants were really, really just hot. I'm so hot. <laughs> yes, it is hot. It is hot, but now I got my red pants. As you could see, they're very bright red. Ah! I like how that's just become a normal thing, showing people my pants. <laughs> just be like, what color are my pants today? It does match my theme. Although my, arguably my theme has become more of purple. Mm. Bitch, yeah. We got the, I actually don't like this color. A lot. <laughs> I don't like this shirt very much. But, it's okay. It's alright. I do like these shorts though. They're nice. They're like, uh, they're kind of water resistant, so I guess that works well for sweat. <laughs> Less discomfort. Anyways. <laughs> um, where was I? Do I also have a cup of water? Cause I feel like, oh I do. <laughs> I have the smallest bit of water. Mm. Famous pizza. Pizza, pizza. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Can I? It's really hot in this room. Can I just? I don't know. <laughs> we do a little uh what what could I wear? I'm feeling <laughs> dress up dress up I got this 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 shirt, you know it's got a few dots on it. might just go with it <laughs> cause it's so hot in here all right. Right, gamers. Oh, I, I've worn it backwards. Hold up. <laughs> Whoosh. Okay. Skudush. There we go. Better shirt. <laughs> this one doesn't have the sleeves, so it's it's nice. Do 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 do. All right, 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 all right
she had in oh yes she wasn't sure where she had intended to go but wasn't entirely surprised to find her feet had guided her to the marina she had spent so much time here on boats with her dad and playing in the sand nearby with her baby sister she hadn't been back in years and hadn't realized how much she missed it she was going to get through this she always did the steely determination flowing through her veins proved so Kinsey had been through some stuff, but this certainly topped everything else she had ever seen. Elias. Alias. <laughs> Is it Alias or Elias? Because I don't know. Capt, please tell me. <laughs> I don't know if it's Alias or Elias. This El Elias? Wait, wait. Elliot? Wait. <laughs> Al. Al. Alias. 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 Elias. Is it Eli? Hello. Al <laughs> Alias. Eli. Eli. Elias. Elias. Elias? Eli Elias? Alias? Ali? No, I don't know! A li us. Easy. What do you mean easy? Uh, not a. Uh. What? Unlias. What? <laughs> Alias. Alias? Alias. Alias. Okay, alias. I am still going to get that wrong. I just- I always forget it. New members react with a newbie roll. Hmm. What does that mean? Oh, it didn't, it didn't work. I don't know. Do do do. See? <laughs> Alias. I see. It doesn't sound like a word. It does. It's just. It's just. It's just a thing, really. Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. On. Oh, you know. Also, a cool thing about my chat, Finn. Um, we actually have pronouns, so your pronouns can show up in the chat. It's really. It's really rad. I really like it. Excuse me. That, that's- okay, that's not- okay, maybe that's- Hey! Cat! Where's the text? Where's- Where's- where, Where's- Where's the text? No! Wait! Did I, I- I think I might have put the wrong command. Hold up. What's the command called? What? I thought it was- I thought it was- We do! I thought it was come out. Oh, maybe it's pronouns. Hold up. Here. Pronouns? Excuse me? Excuse me? Sir? Nightbot? No, it should be come out. I guess the cat is just stupid. Alright, here. I'll put what the bot was supposed to put. There you go. The bot's kind of broken right now. I don't know why it's... It's acting up. But yeah, you can use that website and it's very limited on what you could put in. But um, as you can see, I guess I'm bringing it up here. Just casually um, log in. Excuse me, sir. And then, you know, you know, there's some there's some things you could put. It's cool. I like it. And then they appear in my little chat thing. Where's my chat? Oh, yes. My chat. It's right there. <laughs> my chat's over here-ish. Over, 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 over here. Yeah. The chat right there. It'll, it'll say that. And then I'll also see them. So it's cool. Not that I don't know your pronouns, but... You know, just so other people know. And, and, and if you want to check what other people's pronouns are, you can also... See, they're just, they're just on my stream, so it's cool. As a, they do have limited options, 
you know, not a lot of... Uh, there's, there's some. There's some. They branched out, but they definitely could do more. Mm-hmm. Anyways. She had... Whoa, we time back here. Yeah. A, a Lee Us was once again looking at the boats. The one he had previously pinpointed had filled up before their eyes. One, his own... On his own, he could have made it. But he had someone else he had to worry about. He raised his hand to shade his eyes against the glare of the sun against the water. This motion caused the fabric around his elbow to tug strangely and he went to adjust it, finding that Finn was clutching his jacket. She had grabbed on to get his attention just as he went to move his arm. He smiled at her and she gently pulled on his, up his sleeve, on his sleeve again. Since it was rather loud, she talked very quietly. They had set up this system. She would tug on his jacket to get his attention, as she was doing now. She pointed to someone wearing a bandana and said something he didn't quite hear. Before he could question it, she had turned around and disappeared into the crowd. Startled, he called after her, but to no avail. The only thing he got was a few weird looks from the people around him. He'd excuse me and pardon me, ma'am, his way through the crowd, following the approximate path she had taken. He skirted his way across a large group of people, stumbling out to the other side to see Finn standing next to a young man who looked about his age. He began to accuse her of running off with a stranger and realized how absurd that was. Instead of asking her why she ran, to that she simply replied, uh, to that she replied simply, I know him and I know her. Alias realized to start with a few minutes later gesturing to a girl with a long purple braid who was weaving in and out of the crowd. Stay here, his traveling partners nodded as she darted away, returning a few minutes later with the girl in tow. Her cheeks were flushed with excitement and she was holding onto his arm like he was someone she hadn't seen in forever, someone she didn't want to lose again. She was tall but appeared to be the youngest so far and not by much. She wondered... Uh, they wondered how she knew him. She was bubbly and amis, ami, ami, amik, amicable, amik. I don't know what that word means either. Ben, why is your language so vast? How much time have you been spending with Cap? <laughs> and they chattered as they resumed their search for salvation. Jesus H. Christ? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that word. <laughs> I'm... Yeah. <laughs> but I think I'm so patient. I'm <laughs> I feel like I don't even remember writing half of this. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. It's okay. I think this is a perfect time to read it then. As you're forgetting, as your memory is receding. <laughs> uh, Elias. Uh, the self-appointed leader of their group had slipped away to check something out and the others were waiting patiently for him to come back. While he was gone, they were tucked against the wall of the boathouse he had gone into. Alias? Dang it! <laughs> Alia! <laughs> Miraculous ladybug! Not soft day. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. They were lounging in the shade when suddenly a young woman in a green hoodie walked up to them. 
She had another person in tow, and just as she presumably, uh, she was a per 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 presumably about to state her business, there was a rattling of the chain link fence from the back of the boathouse. Alias <laughs> landed on the ground beside them with a thud. <laughs> the woman took a step back as Alias <laughs> walked towards her. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see me look at chat. <laughs> the woman took a started step back as Alias walked towards her. He definitely could be pretty scary and it was showing now. He saw her fear and seemed to come to his senses. He shook himself a little and pushed Erger gently aside. They talked for a minute, and when it seemed they came to a conclusion, they walked back. Okay, folks! This is Armin. She and her par traveling partner. He gestured to the unfamiliar person who had followed her over. Are going to team up with this. There's strength in numbers, after all. After introductions were made, Alias <laughs> explained <laughs> to them what he had found in the small boat house. After he had clambered over the fence, he found himself inside a small building with a rectangle cut out in the floor where a decent- a decently sized lobster boat was floating. Lobster boat? The rest of the room looked like someone was living there, with belongings scattered all around. But he said that it didn't look like that person was there now. Wherever they are, we need this boat more than they do, he had decided. And at that point, he had climbed back over the fence and ran into- <laughs> Sorry, Finn! They stole a boat! They stole a boat! They stole a boat! <laughs> uh -huh. Okay! Okay, sir! <laughs> Ma'am, what is this? <laughs> Gosh dang! <laughs> I don't know, you ask? <laughs> you ask other people. You don't just immediately go steal a boat. Sir! <laughs> Ma'am, please! <laughs> uh... The group gathered across the fence as he was explaining, and sure enough, they could see the aforementioned boat inside. Just one problem. The fence was very locked. Sure, I'll, uh... Alias? <laughs> Alias was able to climb over it, but none of them would be able to. Alias offered to go back inside and take a look around for the key, but he was interrupted mid-thought. Does anyone have a bobby pin? They all turned to look at Finn, who cringed at the attention, but asked again, Does anyone have a bobby pin? At the vacant expressions, she gave an expressed rated sigh and said, I can pick the lock. Does anyone have a bobby pin? A few of them looked through their pockets and turned up nothing. The rest ducked their heads away from Finn's particular way of looking at them like they were stupid. <laughs> this look of hers would become familiar territory for them. Oh yes. Just Finn being disappointed in us all. Good, good. When everyone else turned up empty. Kenzie rolled her eyes and plucked, plucked one out of her hair, handing it to Finn. She nodded thankfully and crouched down by the padlock, beginning to work at it. Not even a minute later, a satisfying click sounded from the lock and the chains rattled to the s cement. S uh, Finn let out a whoop and shot to her feet, handing the pin back to Kenzie, where it was rare and went right back into her hair. The others looked on, impressed, as she pushed the gates and gestured for them to go in. Alias! <laughs> Ever the big brother. Gently... <laughs> gently pushed in front with a, a hot, haughty tilt to his chin, said, Yeah, well I can hotwire a boat. This was followed by a smattering... Uh, smattering of teasing jeers and a muttering 
from the back of fragile masculinity. <laughs> from Finn. Mmm, yes. <laughs> Go ahead then, big guy. Show us your fancy skills, Invader smirked. Alias muttered to himself as he pulled a small knife out of his pocket and crouched down next to the control panel of the boat. The others spread out across the room, looking for extra supplies that may be useful in the long run. Several seconds later, and... Alias! Had only barely managed to get the door off the panel when a loud squawk and a startled yelp sounded from across the room, a uh, small room. Ah! Yelp! <laughs> Those are the sounds. <laughs> they all whipped around to see that invader had clambered up onto a counter and was perched very precarious. Precariously? I don't know what that word means either. Finn, stop it. <laughs> stop being a writer. Retire. <laughs> Peering into a box suspended from the ceiling. As they watched, an angry ball of feathers and talons exploded out of the box and dove at their face, hissing and clicking its beak all the while. It's pretty accurate. I am scared of birds. <laughs> Not like a big fear. But I am just, if I saw a bird in my proximity, yeah, we, we outta, <laughs> we outta here. <laughs> they all watched in shock as a small bird tried to tear the hair off their friend. No. <laughs> no. Armin snapped into action, pulling off their hoodie and capturing the bird in it. Pulling it off invaders and wrapping it up like an angry burrito. I like that. I like that metaphor. Or, uh, no. That simile, sorry. Figurative language. Huh. She held onto the bird, gently stroking its head, avoiding its snapping beak, while Kinsey rushed over to inspect their face and arms for cuts. Invaders was miraculously unscathed. Which they were all glad about. And somehow, in the matter of maybe a minute, the small parrot in Armin's arms was calm and snuggling in her, to her sweater while she and Fen cooed at it. Dasuki climbed up to where the bird obviously had a nest box and came down with a number of trinkets including a few bottle caps, an emerald earring, and a small keyring and an orange shock. Hmm. Orange shock, you say? <laughs> Sounds like someone who belongs in this sock, SMP. Uh, yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, Alias was staring, wide eyed, wide eyed at the chaos that had erupted beside him. And Tsuki uh, tossed him the keys which he caught without blinking, nor picking his jaw up off the ground. WAIT! Their boat was just pulling away from the dock as a young man was full out sprinting towards them. They were one of the last boats to leave for the night, so it wasn't a wonder that this kid was so best desperate. Alias immediately slammed the boat into reverse while Finn and Tsuki moved to the back and encouraged him to jump. He launched himself off the dock at full speed and overshot the gap by a good foot a fish eff effectively bowling over the two who were waiting to catch him they landed with a thud in the heap blinking stars out of their eyes they looked up to see armin crouched over them fluttering her hands around like she wanted to help but she didn't know if she could touch them the new kid stood up first promptly stumbling and almost falling over again Armin stood up with him, holding her hands in case he needed balance. Alias stuck his head out of the excuse me cabin, drawn by the crash, and locked eyes with Tsuki and Sai as they were heaving themselves off the floor, furring his bar his brows <laughs> in concern. Welcome aboard! This was directed at the new guy, who began to nod, paused, changed his mind, and awkwardly saluted instead. Okay, you know, 07, let's go. 
<laughs> Pulling a half smothered chuckle from Alias. You okay? <laughs> this This to the others who nodded. As the three shook off their embarrassment and began to go back to what they were doing, the hatch banged open and a head poked out of the hole, brandishing a two times four, uh, like a baseball bat. Who are you and what is going on? They all blinked, stunned. The person pulled himself out of the hatch and rose to his feet. He was slightly rumpled, but the look in his eyes said he wasn't messing around. I'm sorry. I think you didn't hear me. What is going on? When nobody answered him, he finally took a moment to look around, and his eyes widened when he saw they were no longer docked. And then he took in the e in the eerie orange of the sky. He looked back at them again, pleaded to be told what was happening. Welcome to the apocalypse. <laughs> Invaders replied with a rueful laugh at this comment. The man's confusion and panic obviously peaked and the plague began to tremble. Armin put her hands. Pa, 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 pa. Placatingly. Mmm, that's what that word is. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. As she walked over to him and gently took the word, the, the word, <laughs> plank out of his hands, he put up a very little fight, sitting down on the rail, putting his head in his hands. She sat down beside him and she began introductions. The bird gently stepped off of her shoulder and onto his, where he absently reached up and scratched its head. My name is Armin and these people are invaders Alias, Finn, and Suzuki. We also have Kenzie. She's... She looked around and frowned. Around here somewhere, I'm sure. And the newest of our bunch is... Emmett, the young man supplied. He had a split die that frankly needed touching up, and he was still slightly out of breath. Yes, Emmett. As she lifted off the uh, names, the respective people waved or made themselves seen somehow. It felt like a teacher taking attendance. The man was looking around, mentally putting uh, names to faces. And this is Benedict, he gestured to the parrot on his shoulder. Although he did not supply his own name. They all nodded or briefly fawned over the small bird. Armin went on. Last night, uh, there was a warning put out telling people that there was a small asteroid headed towards us. Estimated to land in the, uh, land in the middle of the country. Everyone was immediately panicked and, beginning, and began trying to evacuate. As the highways became packed full of vehicles, people thought to escape via the water. Our little group ran into each other through a series of events that lasted most of the afternoon, and a mutual agreement fueled by desperation. We hijacked this boat, one of the last ones available. We're very sorry that we took your boat, sir, the redhead. Finn, he thought, piped up in a small voice. She tried to step back and hide from all the eyes suddenly on her, but a hand between her shoulder blades stopped her short. But we can't say we regret it. Tazuki, the one with the banana, loomed over her shoulder, looking the other man square in the face. We've been through a lo whole lot to get here, and we're not about to roll over and show our bellies now. Plus, we're in the middle of the ocean. I dare you to kick us off. His tone was icy, and he squirmed under the scrutiny. The captain thought it through and eventually conceded. I suppose you're right. You have been through great lengths, and it would be unfair to stop you when you're so close- ah! <laughs> you gave me a heart attack, Luna! You gave me a- That sound scared me. I just screamed. <laughs> Thank you for the raid, Luna. How was your stream? I hope it was good. I think Nightbot's a little broken right now. Nightbot, are you in chat? Where's Nightbot? Rude. I'm good. I'm. Why is Nightbot not a mod? Nightbot, please. 
it hasn't been working lately and I don't know why. Please. It's not gonna work! Rude! I don't know why Nightbot's having a moment. It's fine. Alright, there we go. My streamer's night. I didn't hear the sound. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. It takes a little bit, you know, to... I was just having my chill little... Alright, anyways, it's it's Finn's birthday today, so... We're reading, uh... His story. How's the reading going? It's going great. It's going really, really, really fire. This is basically a whole story about, uh, Cap's community. We're on page 9 right now, but there are... Uh, 20, 29 pages technically, but I think it ends at 22, probably. Mm -hmm. So we've got it, and we got a good portion of the way through. It's been an hour. <laughs> There's a lot of words on these pages, to be honest. And I struggle. <laughs> As you see, Alias <laughs> is pinned. <laughs> It's good. It's good. If you guys want to talk, you can, by the way. Just, you know, give me some things to read after I've... I'll, I'll, I've been looking at them. Do, 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 do. Yes, all right, all right, all right. Um... Do, 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 do. I suppose you're right. You have been through great lengths, and it would be unfair to stop you when you're so close to escape. Although I must ask, where exactly were you planning to go? He raised his eyebrow, waiting for an answer, while others quickly realized that their plan hadn't been thought out much farther than their current situation. You know, I should... Kind of depressing, to be honest, like... Four pieces of chocolate. Wow, thank you, Ad. Inspirational. <laughs> I was just gonna... Let's try some... Let's try some Blockbuster. Hey, yo. No, not that one. Come back here. Old music. No, no, come back here. Come back here. So, here we go. Old music. Poggies. Old music pog. We love. Do -do -do. <laughs> Jeez. I, I don't know where Nightbot went, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody say happy birthday to Finn. They are the special birthday. Gremlin. <laughs> Special birthday, Gremlin. Mm. Mm. And if you don't, I'm banning you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, um, yeah, anyways. He raised his eyebrow, waiting for an answer, while the others quickly realized that their plan hadn't been thought out much further than their current situation. They all shrugged or shook their heads. All rather unhelpful responses, honestly. Well, as it seems, you kids. This evokes, uh, stimmy, st, 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 stim, 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 stomp, stomp, stim, 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 Stim you stim multitanus. I, I forgot how this I forgot how this word was pronounced. <laughs> Simul simultaneous what? What? Stim 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 you you ta Stim you stim <laughs> simultaneous. Is that it? Simultaneous. Stum it's a weird word. Ah, ha, ha. iron go woo. Okay. Sim simul simultaneous protests from Alias, <laughs> Armin, and Tazuki. Uh, but he shot them a look and kept on. Have no evident plan. I could be persuaded to take you someplace safe. Seeing as this is my ship. And I've been traveling these waters most of my life. 
You really mean it? Came from the voice from behind him. He turned around to see a girl with long purple hair and eyes full of fierce hope. Who is this purple haired girl? Who has purple hair? Ho! Homst! He started to reply, to nod, something, but she cut him off, walking towards him, looking like she might push him over if he didn't fall through. Yes, yes, of course I meant it, he hastily replied. I wouldn't say something that loaded without following through, especially saying that I too will need to get off this mainland soonish. He looked up at the sky as explanation, the others following his gaze to his ever-growing ball of fire. He looked out to the left, holding his hands up against the horizon, making some rough drink calcul- some rough calculations in his head. He stood up abruptly, almost sending Armin back- um, Armin tumbling into the drink. He grabbed her arm almost as mildly, riding her and proceeding to kick Fan! Fan! <laughs> hey, Fan! Finny! Finster! Finnegus! Finn, I'm stuck! Please! The pen! The pin, it's gone! No! No! How will I know how it's pronounced? No, Finn! Finn, come back! I'm pretty sure it's Alias! <laughs> I think it's Alias. <laughs> Proceeding to kick A. <laughs> yes. Out of the helm. Taking up the position by the wheel and turning them a rough 90 degrees. He stuck his head out of the covered area. I have a friend and a place we can go. We should be safe with her as long as you can trust me. Everyone nodded in various amount uh, 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 admissions of trust. Oh, my feet. My feet is a... <laughs> My foot's sweaty. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Needs a bath. Mmm. My nice scent of toes. <laughs> oh, my pits. Oh, gosh. I hate teenage life for real. <laughs> Look at my spelling. <laughs> Esquitini! <laughs> the story is making your foot cry, it's true! There were too many trigger warnings at the beginning of the story! Ah, <sighs> uh, the few sprue hours of the ride were mostly uneventful. It was a small boat, and there wasn't much for the passengers to do. They ended up sitting round the deck and chatting, getting to know each other for real this time. As the sun went down and dark began to fall, out of habit people started to light up lights and things. They were all quickly rendered null, seeing the seeing as the fire in the sky was so bright. The captain was agitated and starting to rub it off on the others. He was pacing as best he could in the limited space periodically looking up and judging the distance from the asteroid to the horizon the gap was slowly closing as tensions came to hey head the captain finally clapped his hands to get their attention all right guys this thing will be hitting the ground anytime now gather your things and head below decks this could get rough and you'll be safer there the hold is very small, so pretend like you like each other. <laughs> he laughed nervously. Ha ha ha! And some of the others did too. Ha ha ha! They did. As he said, though. Packing their bags.
drugs are back up and taking them with Except you, he put his hand up before Elias walked past You were piloting before I got there You seem to be the most knowledgeable of the bunch I may need some help when things get rocky A late, uh, e, uh <laughs> Alias nodded nervously but gave Kinsey his pack to take down with her. The roar of the fireball was deafening and they were grateful to head below deck. The captain wasn't exaggerating when he said the cabin was small. They were practically sitting in each other's laps. Tensions were wound so tight they could feel it almost- <laughs> They could feel it crackling against their skin. The impishing- <laughs> The anticipation didn't have didn't have to too long to build though. They were barely settled when the very foundations of the world shook and crumbled. Those of them who were already wound the tightest blacked out slightly from the stress of the shock wave. The sound hit them several seconds later, and despite them being miles away from ground zero, they all felt it deep in their chest and in their teeth. It was louder than anything anybody had experienced, and they clung to each other out of sheer primal fear. Up on the deck, the captain and... Elias had died behind the small shelter in hopes that it would prevent the blast from burning, melting, or otherwise unmaking them. Unmaking them. <laughs> like we're like we're a dress up sim. <laughs> like we're little dress up characters. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what happens. We'll go back to the base. The default look. <laughs> the boys up top stayed whole, but only barely. They were lucky. Nobody knew just how close they came to being the bones in the ocean. Huh? Uh, when the majority of the... <laughs> Captain had a single gash across his left cheekbone. He wasn't sure where it came from, and Alias thought he might need some stitches later. But that wasn't their most pressing problem. Otherwise, they were fine. And the captain began making corrections and preparing for the wave. Somehow, perfectly firing orders at L A A A A A L E A L E A S. While doing so, working together, they quickly got everything secured and tied down. When the captain stood up and brushed his hands off, he turned and found himself facing a wall of water that he had actively uh, that he had to actively crane his neck to see on top of. Um, alias, I Elias, I Elias, I oh, alias. A voice came be five. <laughs> came from behind him <laughs> and he turned his heel into the helm alias he handed the other length of the sturdy rope tie us together and then so to something sturdy make sure your knots are good and tight they may be the only thing to keep us from becoming one with the drink alias nodded and hurry did what he was told the spray from the wave began hitting them just as he's finished and they huddled by the console one held the rudder and the other the reel their stomachs dropped to their feet at this rapid 
Everything was a blur. Their noses and mouth were flo flooded with soft water. It stung their throats and burned up their eyes. Up and down and down was up. They lost track of whether they were inside or outside of the water. The captain had hoped they might be able to ride on top of the wave, considering they have been fairly close to the mainland and the... <laughs> the tsunami hadn't had time to get very big. He was wrong. An eternity later, they were alive. He didn't know how, but they had made it. They were bruised and thoroughly dizzy, but no worse for the wear. They lay on the deck, coughing at oceans worth of water against their lungs. The captain bolted up and lurched to be sick over the side of the boat, dragging a similarly woozy Elias with him. As the sea began to settle, the hatch rattled where it was locked. Elias stumbled across the fish, the key out of his shoe where he had stashed it. It went to unlock the hatch. The, the door banged open, and Finn was out of there like a shot. Close on their heels were Kenzie and Emmett. Despite the captain's insistence that they would be safer below the deck, the rest came tumbling out in quick successions. They huddled surprisingly close together on the deck, considering how tightly they had been packed into the, the captain just previously. The rest of the ride was uninventable in comparison. The captain taught Armin how to steer so that he and Alias could get some rest with the others. It was the middle of the night, after all. They slept like the dead. An adrenaline crash will do to that person. Will do that to a person. It was a dreamless sleep that felt more like they had been knocked unconscious, but in the morning they were in a better mood and thoroughly ready to be on solid ground again. The captain had just taken the wheel back from Armin and there was an excited Whoop! shout from behind them. They turned up to look and the invaders had spotted an island. The captain's face visibly lit up when he realized they were looking! Land ho! As the island came into view on the horizon, excitement levels rose steadily as the details became closer, clearer. It was mostly flat with some large hills and many trees. There was a round lagoon on the side facing them soon as they were close enough to see a light from the small fire on the beach in the same of a proper ship ducked on the lagoon silhouetted against the rising sun. A figure on the beach flagged them down with a couple palm fronds, and they ducked as close to the sand as they could. The captain got them pretty close, but they still had to swim a little. The water was cold, and the discovery of which was announced to be uh, announced with a cacophony of complaints. Reese! Reese's paces! The girl was sprinting towards them. She threw her arms around the captain, almost knocking them both over in the process. She was beaming and the others could tell them they haven't seen each other in quite some time. The captain, Reese apparently, brushed himself off and slung his arm around her <laughs> as he explained the situation. Everyone, this is Ella. <laughs> Ella, everyone. They had all waved and there was a chorus of people saying hello. He went over to explain how she lived on this island and that years ago she had offered him to come stay with her whenever she needed a break from society. The bird squawked and she laughed. Yes, yes, hello to you too, Benedict, as she scratched his chin and he chirped happily. Hee <laughs> hee. Reese, you're bleeding. You're hurt. She touched the gas on his cheek and examined the blood on her fingertips. The captain shook his head, pulling away from her. It's nothing. I'm fine. At the judging look from Elias and uh, 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 Ella, he protested further. Really? I'm fine. He wiped his shoulder across his cheek to mop up the blood, wincing in pain as he did so. The gesture was all for naught, though, as the blood welled back to the surface almost immediately. Alias and Conspicuously handed him a handkerchief, and they all looked pointedly away while he dabbed his face. Dude! This place is cool! And it was bouncing on his toes and taking everything in. The rest had to agree. It was a beautiful island, despite the fire on the horizon and the ashes <laughs> snowing down around them. Almost perfectly timed. With that unspoken uh, statement, 
been sneezed a few times, and the Sasuke shook out their hair, the ashes leaving it vaguely gray. All right, the captain clapped his hands on that. No, let's get you suckers inside. <laughs> he nodded at the ship. Beautiful. <laughs> Finn's eyes were sparkling as she as she'd never seen something so quite amazing. And as far as the others knew, she hadn't. My ship is rather... Oh, <laughs> Finn, why? Finn, what is this word? Pa, pa. Not, not the. <laughs> please. Learn to pronounce, please. Pull, pull, cra, to, da, nut. It means beautiful. I'm so angry. I'm so. <laughs> Why? Pull, chit, news. Isn't she? The captain grinned and looked around and. Such a way that implied he was expecting one of the others to understand the oblivious inside joke he had just made. He was met with crickets. It was rough. <laughs> it was really rather painful. <laughs> Armin suppressed a snort. And patted him on the shoulder sympathetically while the rest <laughs> shuffled their feet and did their best to move on. Ella cleared her throat and led them up to the gangplank on her ship. They had been fighting over it for so long and they couldn't remember whose it really was and began the tour. A little while later, when the tour was almost over, the sound of footsteps pounding down the hall rang through the ship. Kinsey, invaders, and Finn rounded the corner seconds later. Their arms were full of fabric. They were laughing triumphantly, but also arguing about who got to carry what. Guys, guys, guys! Finn burst out. Look what we found! <laughs> the captain, who had previously been chatting with Ella and the others, and was turned away from the door, replied absentmindedly. What did you find, Armin? which was closely followed by a simultaneously startled squawk from Armin's side. Squawk! <laughs> or sorry, squawk! <laughs> Realizing what had happened, the captain scratched the back of his neck and chuckled awkwardly. <laughs> I, uh, Finn, yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. We don't even look the same. Finn and Armin giggled in tandem. Hey. Hey, this is the name of an SMP. Hold up. What does this mean? What does this mean? Tandem definition. A bicycle? Uh, hey, hi, hi, hi. Alongside each other, together, I see. Yeah, there's a tandem SMP. Anyways. <sighs> Finn and Armin giggled on tandem. Same brain cell. Amidst the captain's noises of protest and apologies, unbeknownst to them, a bond was forming. Guys! Kinsey interrupted. You're missing the best part! We found costumes! She waved to the bundle. She waved the bundle of cloth in her arms excitedly. Hey now, hey now. Invaders shoved their way in the front. We are not children. We do not play dress up. <laughs> this was said into the uttermost indignation and was met with a chuckle from Alias, which was quickly shot down by a glare from Armin and the three dissolved back into argument. The fighting crested as Ella walked over to them, inspecting the clothes in their arms. Oh, she laughed. I forgot all about these. And the three fell silent, waiting with bated breath for her to tell the story. These belong to my light crew. May they rest easy. 
It's been years since I've been in that old trunk. They were moth-bitten and smelled kind of funky, but they were in pretty good cons condition, all things considered. She looked around at the ragtag group who were currently occupying the ship. They were all covered in soot and ashes. Some of them looked pretty banged up, and Reese was still bleeding somehow. Their clothes were singed and tattered in pieces. They all needed new clothes and probably a bath. She did the math in her head and decided it was probably a good idea. Say, there's probably much more where they found those. You all, you could all probably find something that would fit pretty but good. I could show you the room. There's also a small spring up in the middle of the island that you guys can choose to watch up. Wash up. What do you say? Oh, by the way, um, I've actually, I've read up to this part. I, I stopped somewhere, uh, where we were judging the outfits. And that's what I made the fan art of, uh, Finn. And, like, the outfit, you know, I made fan art for this. I pretty much stopped after I heard, I heard the description of what size outfit. I mean, Finn's outfit looked like. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> Majority of them followed excitingly at the prospect of a bath and some clean clothes. As Ella led them down the hall, she turned the group loose in the quarters of her old crew and told them she would meet them topside where they were ready to wash up. Emmett and Alias opted to not to change but borrowed some spare clothes to wear while they washed their current ones they headed up the ladder and chattered with ella as she led them into a small clearing in the forest she told them that she wouldn't be far away and they shouldn't worry to take their time the boys spread out uh to the corners of the meadow and turned their backs on one another despite how often they probably used public change rooms or showers Ella left them a small bar of soap, and once they were changed, they got to work scrubbing the muck out of their clothes and hair. Once they were squeaky clean, literally, the soap was pretty sticky and their clothes were sopping wet, but no longer filthy. They began to trek back uh, to the ship to see if Ella had a clothesline they could uh, air out their clothes. In the meantime, the captain, Armin, Finn, Tasuki, Invaders, and Kenzie spent a good time a long t uh, while rummaging through the trunks and wardrobes trying to find the perfect combination so much so that the others were on their way back before they finished as the second six were making their way up to the deck clothes in hands they all they almost literally ran into uh liot uh a a a alias who was uh attempting to hang a rope in between the masts uh, Finn paused for a moment to watch, but set off into peals of laughter when he somehow managed to tie himself in one of the knots he was making. She offered to help, but Ella took over, shooing them off to get cleaned up. They made their way to the clearing, the captain apparently knowing exactly where to go. There was a bit of an awkward discussion before they decided to take turns uh, to change and bathe, with Armin, Kinsey, and Finn going first, and then invaders, Tsuki, and the captain would go last. The captain tossed the bar of soap to Armin, and then and they quickly scrubbed the grime out of their hair and set off their faces and changed into their new clothes. They then dunked their old clothes into the pool and rinsed them out, not worrying too much about it, considering they weren't really going to put them back on again. Armin, Kinsey, and Finn traded places with the others, uh, them doing much the same thing to change and wash. Once they were all finished and blissfully clean, they went back to the ship together with the help of alias and they hung their wet clothes up to dry stupid tall people <laughs> and muttered as he was hanging things up what was that elias turned to her i don't think i heard you he smirked as she shuffled her feet i said thank you alias for helping us you're so tall and cool that's what i thought armin smothering laughter stepped in between them before uh, could come to fisticuffs, courtesy of Sa uh, Finn, who was already te teasingly squaring up, bouncing on her toes and everything. Ella briefly pulled aside the captain to stitch up his face. They were below decks for half an hour when he reappeared, gingerly prodding at his cheek. 
Ella looked rather proud of her work, but the captain was disgruntled and fairly worse for rare. It wasn't the best though. The cut had been pretty deep and it wouldn't have healed properly, leaving a pretty gnarly small scar as it was, it wouldn't be perfect when it all closed up. He would have a battle scar, the first of many the crew would receive throughout their time together. Kinsey looked around at everyone's cool new clothes and came up with a wonderful idea. They would have a fashion show. Everyone primped excitedly below decks as Ella finished setting up a mock runway with an extra sail and some candles she had made. Cause that, cause this, that was the best idea on a wooden ship. They had all raided uh, Ella's weapon stash. Not that they felt they would need them, but because it made them feel cool and like real pirates. The captain was chatting with Suzuki as Finn snuck up behind him. He had found a slightly worse for wear tricorn hat and she snatched it off his head and ran away giggling as he sighed and <laughs> shook out his old hat, pulling it down around his ears. He glared at Suzuki, smothered a chuckle. Don't encourage them. Finn then went to a hunt to locate Elias to borrow his pocket knife while she also run off, uh, which she also ran off with. And after a few minutes later, they also went and nabbed a small elastic from Kenzie, proceeding to lock herself in the bathroom, aka the only room with a functional mirror. They emerged a few seconds later when, thankfully, everyone else was above decks waiting for the show to start. Ladies and gentlemen and assorted others, welcome to our crew's very first, she cleared her throat, fashion show. Ella was standing at the end of the runway she uh, had fashioned while the others sat strewn across the floor, wait watching expectantly. Seeing as this was her ship, it was only natural that she went first. She was wearing her official dressy captain's garb which consisted of perfectly cut and tailored red velvet jacket, complete with coattails and gold buttons. She had knee-high back leather boots with gold buckles and black rawhide leggings. On her head, she wore a red velvet tricorn hat that perfectly matched her coat. And while they watched, a small lizard poked its head above the fold in her hat and flicked its tongue at them. She strutted down the runway, did a fancy twirl, and struck a sassy fighting pose to show off her ordinately engulfed cutlass. The others cheered. She took a bow and found her seat amongst the others, tapping Captain on the shoulders uh, as soon as she, as she did. It was his turn. He hastily stood up and smothered out his pants, uh, generally adjusting his clothes on his way to the runway. He walked down the runway looking a little unsure of himself, but working it nevertheless. He was wearing a plain white, tea, uh, white shirt with a black bandana folded around his neck. His pants were al also black rawhide, but his boots were brown and almost succeed. He had a mauve scarf tucked in his waist and a simple iron cutlass sheathed at his hip. His hat was a typical white sailor's hat with a brim, uh, black brim and gold embroidery. Guys, I've got 15 minutes to read! <laughs> Guys, I've got 15- Guys, I've got- I've only got 15 minutes. I've only- <laughs> Oh no! Alright, alright, alright. Uh, I, I literally gotta go. Mm -hmm. I literally gotta go. But, you know, we've- 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 we've finished most of it, so that's- That's good. Mm, that's good. Listen. <laughs> oh gosh. Um. That's good. That's that's okay. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish it. Realistically, I'm not gonna be able to finish it. So I'm gonna. We're just gonna. We're just gonna stop it right there. So that's where we got. That's where we got. Um, page. 
page 14 that's where we got all right all right everyone well i'm gonna go find i'm gonna go raid someone apparently <laughs> we actually have someone in mind so i do hope you enjoy this person you get a bit of points for joining in the raid so you know stick around for a bit and also this person's playing some minecraft you can get to know them all that good jazz i believe they're actually doing some lore today as well although i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure so yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna edit here because we can't really finish it but yeah maybe 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 we'll finish it next stream which could be that could be uh probably yeah probably tuesday would be the next date available but yeah thank you all for coming i'm gonna go raid asa go enjoy their stream please if you can <laughs> if you can ace is a great 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 streamer you know pretty underrated they just hit affiliate so yeah you, you could get some points there it's just two go torture them Go spam sound alerts at them, especially Jabated. That one's a good one. All right, bye everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, let's get it on the ending screen. Yeah, I'm just gonna let the credits roll real quick. Thank you for our mods, Eli, Wilbur, and of course, thank you for the raid. Yeah, bye bye. See you in the next one. It'll be Tuesday at um around 8 p.m. to uh, 10 p.m. Sometimes we go to 11, occasionally. Or sometimes we go a bit early and we start at seven. But mostly, for the most part, also, you know, just in case you didn't know what my time was, it's CST. You know, it's that time for me. <laughs> and, 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 and the reason, frick. Nightbot's still not working. All right, we'll have to fix that. But yeah, bye everyone. Bye-bye. I'm gonna go get dressed. And all that jazz. Oh, oh seven. <laughs>